Welcome, adventurers, to Loop Hero Academy. In this episode, we are going to be looking at what it takes to bring down the priestess. She is the boss of Chapter 2. You thought beating the Lich was hard in Chapter 1? Well, wait till you go up against this boss. She is way different from the Lich. I love seeing the variety, but it does mean that you need different tricks to be able to bring her down. And she can be quite daunting. The first time that I went up against her, she just completely destroyed me, and I only managed to land two hits against her. So let's get into a breaking down exactly how her encounter works. The Priestess is a summoner, and she has two attacks. She summons angels, and she summons stained glass windows. We're going to go over them one at a time, starting with the angels. The angels here are the ones that do the damage. They come in, and they will get two attacks off, and then they will leave. But at they are paced so that at the rate that she summons them back in, you are going to basically always have to be fighting one of them. They are immune to damage, even though the game gave them a health bar. So don't worry about having to try and target them or take them out early. There is none of that. Now, what that means is that your counterattack chance does nothing for you. The angels are the, one who, the ones who are attacking, and they are the ones that the counterattack would be directed at, but they are invulnerable. So just drop any form of the counterattack chance that you brought when you're going through those final loops. Work it out of your build. It is a wasted stat up against the priestess. The angels are just inevitable. They're going to get their damage off. They're going to do what they do. They're just a haste form of damage that the priestess is always going to be able to put out. But they are actually not the ones that you really have to worry about when you're fighting her. What you really have to worry about are these stained glass windows, even though the windows cannot attack you. So what do they do? Each of these stained glass windows, and they are summoned in sets of five, they each add 20% chance of taking a hit for the priestess. What this means with the way that the game adds all of this together is that when she has the full set of five, she is guaranteed to have the damage negated by one of the windows. One of the windows will break instead of the priestess actually taking the damage. Now, once you have broken several of the windows, gotten her down to only having, say, two windows in front of her, then you have a 60% chance of hurting the priestess and a 40% chance of just breaking another window. She keeps summoning these windows incredibly quickly. She brings up the full set of five every other attack that she makes. And this is where her encounter can get scary really fast. This is how, when I first went up against her, I was barely able to scratch her health bar. It was because she kept on bringing up the windows so quickly that my attacks were all just being negated. When you're fighting the Lich, it was a strategy where you could just try and build up evasion and sustain through and eventually your damage would ramp up and you could bring him down. That will not work here. What the windows show us is that there is a key stat for beating the priestess. There's always going to be a key stat for beating these bosses. With the priestess, it is attack speed. You need to be able to get attacks out so quickly that you can cut through those early windows and then start putting damage that actually sticks onto the priestess. So, if our goal is to have the highest attack speed possible, or at least options of getting really high attack speed, and we're looking at what classes we want to use when we go into battle, the classes are pretty different in this regard. So which class has the highest attack speed? Honestly, it's probably the rogue. Uh, but the rogue is not the best class to bring into this battle. Putting the official definition of the attack speed percentage increase aside, the class that is going to be putting out the most attacks, the fastest, is the Necromancer. And that's what you see me playing here today. This gameplay is highlights from my stream that I ran earlier today. I'm going to record this Academy of Session over the gameplay and then send you guys over to Streaming Teddy as he's over here trying to figure out how to play the Necromancer. This was my first, one of my first battles with the Necromancer, actually. But this Necromancer class absolutely thrives in 
fighting this boss, his army of skeleton summons just tossing out their weak little attacks one right after another is going to chew through the priestess's wall of windows and then start being able to land that actually meaningful damage. The Necromancer is also great in this situation because he's really given the chance to ramp up, get that full horde of summons out there, and that's where he just snowballs out of control. Honestly, I feel like the Necromancer class is a little overtuned right now. I don't know if the developers are going to end up nerfing him, bringing his power level down a little bit, or if he is meant to be this way so that you can uh, use him to really crest the progressing um, challenge that the game, as the game ramps up the later chapters. As it is, he is far and away the best class for this particular scenario, and there is a very strong argument for saying that he is just the best class overall. So what are the key pieces of the build aside from attack speed? Because attack speed works interestingly for the Necromancer. The attack speed increases how quickly you summon new skeletons. So he uses it very differently than the other classes. So what are the key parts of his build that you need to be looking for? Well. He has the skeleton level stat. This is very important. Being able to have your skeletons leveled up, uh, that is their health, that's their damage, incredibly important. Then you have summon quality. This is also super important. Being able to get the strength in summons, so getting the skeleton warriors, getting the skeleton guard, they are key. The guard is going to take hits, he's gonna be the tank, he's gonna taunt, he's gonna guarantee that the angels are killing him instead of putting damage onto your character, the actual necromancer, or one of your damage dealers, your warriors. And the warriors with their increased attack speed compared to the other skeletons are also just way better in the situation of fighting the priestess than if you're just summoning up the normal skeletons. Now, he has another stat, which is his max number of skeletons he's able to summon. This stat is actually really important for this battle. Having it very high, four or five, is gonna help you a ton because you actually do have the chance in this battle. This battle is slow paced enough that you're gonna be able to get all of your skeletons out there. And that's where you just start the snowball for the Necromancer. There's so many on your side, allies that you have that the enemies are trying to target so that they're not able to get through them. This is the knife's edge that the Necromancer runs. If he is not able to get his summons out there, they don't stick, and he just has like one skeleton out there and then it, it dies and he just brings back that one, he's never gonna go anywhere. He's just gonna fail. He wins when he can start outpacing how many he has. He starts rolling up. You've got more allies than you have enemies. That is where the Necromancer is happy. That's where he just cruises through this game and he will just roll over this boss. <clears throat> so having the increased number of skeletons, super important, get it up four or five. When you hit the fifth, it's actually pretty interesting. You will get a skeleton archer and then they're going to be off on the side. They're gonna be untargetable and they do a ton of damage. They attack pretty fast. They are great to have and they are just always gonna be there then where it's a little more chaotic for the melee skeletons that can be taking damage from the angels. So being able to get that archer, if you can bump your number of summoned skeletons all the way up to five, go for it. It is super fun to have. Now the Necromancer's other stats. So his attack speed is important. Being able to keep summoning your skeletons to hit your max as quickly as possible and stay at that max number, very good. Do so if at all possible. And his other stats besides that, really not that important. You don't care about defense. You don't care about evasion. And now he has another unique stat. He has his magic hit points. Magic hit points, I actually would argue, is one of his most important stats when you are just progressing through the loops. Getting that magic shield at the beginning of every encounter and having it refresh every single encounter just makes him so durable. The game text says that the warrior is the most durable class, and the argument there is because he's able to bring really high defense because he's using shields, and he gets the regeneration stat, he gets vampirism. He has all these things to make him just tanky and tough. But I would say that the Necromancer, with this constantly refreshing magic shield in every single encounter, is actually more durable than
then the warrior. The necromancer is also able to get damage scattered across onto his summons instead of on him directly. So there's another token to the necromancer being tougher than the warrior. But that could just point to how overtuned the necromancer class feels overall. What I actually do in this scenario is at the end of this when I fight the boss I have an amulet that I get that is a really high level compared to the loop that I'm on and it gives me a huge pool of magic hit points and I leave that in for the entire loop and then I actually leave it in for the very beginning of the boss battle. I leave it in until that magic hit point shield is broken by the boss and then I switch the amulet out for another one that will give me better secondary stats. So if you are really looking to min-max this encounter, that's a trick that you can do. Get a big magic shield for the beginning of the encounter. Once it's broken, switch that item out because that magic hit points is not regenerating, it's not coming back, it's not doing anything for you. Put something else in there that is going to increase your other secondary stats that are going to be able to add combat power to you and help you out against the priestess. What are the other considerations we have? Well. We can think about how we are building our deck, what cards we are bringing in for this battle. Because attack speed is our key stat and forest and thickets gives attack speed, that's a great card to bring here. I actually don't have it unlocked, so it's not essential, but it is a way that will really give you a boost. Having a well built up forest by the end of your map is going to increase your attack speed even more than the items that you get. It's going to more than double that attack speed bonus that you're getting, so it can be a very um, beneficial piece to add in. When you're placing your cards down, the Priestess does not bring a palace or any adjacent spaces around the campfire, so you don't have to worry about building those up. You don't have to worry about filling those in the way you did when you were fighting the Lich, which is nice. The Lich, it was it was crucial that you did that or just saved enough oblivions to be able to knock off the palaces once they did spawn. And here when you're in chapter 2, the other enemies have taken a pretty big step up. They are a lot tougher with these new skills that they are bringing. And so you can, you get a lot more freedom here without being tied to having to, to develop all the spaces around the campfire. You can use other twists and bends in the loop to your advantage to try and develop other locations as key ways to be able to get through encounters. My favorite thing here is placing blood groves in areas where they have the largest amount of coverage because that can really make these encounters a lot easier as you are fighting through them. They also they do spawn the flesh golems and flesh golems hit pretty hard especially with the new kamikaze skill that they have here in chapter 2 but they drop such good loot after you beat them that it's just incredible. And as always, you want to place villages right leading up to <clears throat> right leading up to the campfire so that you get that burst of healing right as you're going into the boss because you're not actually going to get the healing from the campfire unless you have upgraded the field kitchen, I believe, to level 3. Then you're still going to get the campfire healing, but anyway, you want to have that healing leading right into the boss. So scaling your loop so that your early encounters are kind of easy so that you get better loot for the new enemy level and then you get the hardest encounters around the middle and then you come back around a row of healing I found works really well especially for preparing you on your runs where you're gonna try and beat the boss. Our final consideration is what kind of skills are you looking for when you level up this necromancer. I'm going to talk about the necromancer specifically. If you're trying to bring one of the other classes in to fight them, it is anything that's going to give you better attack speed. Um, durability skills definitely help as well. And just understanding the how the priestess's encounter is going to work in general should give you a good idea when you look at those skills to know if they are going to be beneficial or if they're going to be dead weight when it comes to actually fighting the priestess. So for the Necromancer specifically, he has a skill that looks really unexciting and it just says that you get plus one max skeletons. It's really boring, right? It's just a stat, but that stat is so hard to come by and it fills up so much space on your items in your build and it is so important for him in fighting the priestess that just take this skill. Like, you will not be sorry having that extra summon 
making the Necro Mancer's snowball just that much bigger is a big deal. Now there is another one that also looks kind of unexciting. Well, I don't know how unexciting it looks. That's probably the, not the best way to say it. I actually take it here kind of early and it's called Horde. What it does is it gives you three strengthened skeletons at the beginning of a loop and then they follow you around through the battles. And so this means that you get them immediately with the battle along with your initial summon and you get two warriors and a tank, I believe. And now what they do is their, their health does not carry over between encounters, and so they're just there as long as they stay alive. And in my case here, they die within about two encounters. So I am pretty low on the horde when I first see how it works. If that was all they did, then I would say never take that skill. But, but, and this is a big but, they come in to help you when you fight the boss. And that is just such a huge difference to be starting the battle with four summons instead of one and guaranteed three of them are the strengthened summons. It again, going back to how the Necromancer snowballs his encounters by getting his summons out on the board, being able to start with the full board of them, night and day difference, absolutely night and day difference. It helps me a lot in this run through and I guarantee you that it will help you a lot in all of your other run-throughs. Spoiler alert, I have also beaten the Chapter 3 boss, and right as I was getting into that encounter, I got a level up, I saw Horde, I picked it because I knew I wouldn't be sorry, and I was not sorry. I beat the Chapter 3 boss on my very first try, partly because of how much that just set me ahead in that encounter. So there we go. We are going to send you back over to Streaming Teddy, who is still trying to figure out the Necromancer. This is like his first battle with the Necromancer. Oh, look at him. He is puzzling things out so hard. But yeah, that has been this edition of Loop Hero Academy. You now have everything that I've learned about how to beat the Priestess. I hope that it helps you guys. It helps you guys beat her. It helps you guys clear Chapter 2, move on to Chapter 3. There is so much exciting stuff. Once you get up there, you're able to unlock crazy new upgrades, really start cracking the game open, getting to the good stuff. That's what I want to see you guys be able to do. So thanks to, your, thanks to you guys for watching, and have a good one. <clears throat> it only starts kicking into effect once you have, you're reaching that max, but being able to get there more often seems like it's going to be the better deal. Okay, uh, da -da 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 -da. well, I'll trade off the attack speed, I think. So it's all regen or regen and summon quality. Let's get some summon quality into the build. Let's get some of these special warriors. Oh man, they cut through our magic shield so fast. Alright, oh hey, there's a new guy. Skeleton Guard, 65 health, 15 damage and attacks, pretty slow. He has a first target thing there. Oh, okay. So he taunts, basically. It looks like he will be the enemy's first target, I think is what that means. Yeah, it doesn't say here, but uh, I mean, he was started taking damage as soon as he appeared. It's like the enemies switched to focusing on him. Let's go here. Get another cemetery build up. These mountains are extremely important now. I'm like, oh, I better min-max my mountains, which is not something I usually worry about. Because otherwise, like, that's the only way I'm getting all this up. I'll suppress some of these encounters. They're getting kind of, kind of flooded with the enemies. Okay, level sixes. Yes, please. Defense, attack speed, and max skeleton. Okay. Wow, this becomes a mess to look at when you're looking at stuff that's giving you multiple stats and you're looking at two of them, so you're like, first is this better, and then which one do I replace? I think we replace this one. 
It means that we could have gotten our group. We lose some summon quality, but we get higher skeleton level. The skeleton level seems like a pretty important stat. So does the quality, honestly, if you can get that guard up there who's gonna taunt for you, like that seems great. This is just having the basic guys and the warriors. I mean, there's still a chance that the enemies drop them. I'm just gonna keep on upgrading this ring. Try and keep the game pace a little higher rather than going really deep into all the uh, min maxing on them. Alright, I still want this. I should probably purposefully just finish that treasury off pretty quick here because we're on loop 5. It's really hard to tell how well the Necromancer is handling things because he has extremely low health. I mean, he's very fragile, so if we hit a really hard encounter and the guys just like punch through us, we could die just in a single encounter. But that being said, up till now we've been doing great. We're at full health. We have four potions in the bag. Maybe that's what I need to watch. I need to watch how many potions we burn as we go around. This is giving us a little bit of regeneration. I like just the shield. That's going to quote unquote regenerate more because that pops in every single battle. Okay, I could replace this, which is giving us defense, attack speed, evasion, and summon quality for just 2% more summon quality. That, now that I've said it, sounds like a rip-off. How is summon quality that important that an entire level on your ring is just 2% better? Terrible. Okay. Um, maybe we'll build a village over here. And we'll build a village up in here. The village in the grove. Strange people walk there. Mm, I don't like how many bandits there are now, but I don't know if I want to spend an oblivion on them. What else would I spend oblivions on? A, as the warriors usually spend oblivions on cemeteries that I've built, just like warrior, I don't take cemeteries anymore. But, as a necromancer, we've been doing okay. Okay. Goodbye, bandit camp. No longer will you have a chance to steal my items. Put this in here. Building alongside the blood grove has been very beneficial to us in the past. Build here on the inside with the blooming meadows. Meadows only bloom if they are placed adjacent to another uh, tile. And the key with their adjacency is it has to do orthogonal adjacent. The game is not very clean on when diagonally adjacent is important and when orthogonally adjacent is important. Hmm, so the spiders are slowing us down. Does that mean that we summon slower or do we have like a no effect? Hey, we brought in the double. That's cool. This, uh, golem is always terrifying. But well, we made it through pretty well. We did use a bunch of health potions, so maybe we didn't make it through super well. <laughs> I should probably check, like, oh, yeah, we burned everything we had in that fight. Ah, oh, we made it through super well, guys. Okay, we can in well, we lose magic hit points, but we get attack speed, summon quality, and skeleton level. Honestly, I don't think that's worth it. I think that the magic hit points is so useful because it comes in every battle. Maybe it is less useful on the later loops, but early game, early game, that's insane to get super high there. And then here we sacrifice skeleton level, we do to get higher summon quality. Man, the Necromancer, it's hard for me to keep the pace of the game high because I'm just learning all these new stats and trying to figure out how they work, what's good dealing with two brand new items. Like the rogue's new item was boots. Boots are so straightforward, they just give you evasion and then they give you the secondary stats. And I'm already used to what evasion does. This guy, this guy's like, yeah, 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 but what if my special items fed also my special stats? I'm like, okay, okay. But I don't know what those special stats do. <laughs> Better find out. 
Okay, we'll build a road lantern over here just because it's our chance of finishing this treasury. We really want to finish the treasury before we retreat. But honestly, <coughs> well, we get a level up. Maybe this level up will be crazy good. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Card sharp. I don't care about that. Horde. Three strengthened skeletons will be joining the hero on every loop to help in battle. Uh, what does that mean? On every loop. Second thoughts. Got a new set. I mean, this it seems interesting. All right, we'll try it. That could have been one where I actually needed to uh, take, take some new options. It could be garbage. We'll find out. The villages are healing us up a little bit. We still have two health pots in the bank. Maybe we can make it around again. Maybe. Maybe we can. Evasion, summon quality, skeleton level. The thing is, I wish that the secondary stats, like they could just add secondary stats to the primary stat here. But I'll take that. And I'll do this. We'll spread out our stats on the idea that later in the game you lose your magic shield more often. So like a couple hit points there and the magic shield don't make as big a difference as being able to get like these unique skeleton types. We have this one guy taking up all the shots for us right now. He's doing a great job. Oh, we got him again. Okay, yep. Yeah, I feel like you, once you get the threshold of being able to get him as one of your summons, you are doing way better than before. And they dropped an amulet with major... Hmm, and defense. I mean, I don't care about defense because I don't think I share it with the skeleton. If I shared the defense with the skeleton, then it would be way more desirable, but as it is, I don't want to do. Uh, hmm. You know, I have been keeping the Scarecrow in because as all the other character types, it's just you, and so when his damage damages everybody on the board, it's really only hurting his friends. But here, he is just taking out all of my little summons. So probably if I'm going to run the Necromancer again, we actually remove wheat fields. And that's not too bad, like I, it, it's a really bad encounter for us, so we eliminate that. It just gives us a little bit more healing in the villages, but we're okay not having that. And it means that we can bring in another card instead. And I remember as we were looking through, there were definitely some that we wanted to bring. Bring in the Vampire Mages. I want to see the Necromancer up against the Vampire. Just something like that. Alright, we got the tank up. Yeah, get the, get the Scarecrow first, please. Now they all get raged though. Man, goblins. Goblins are the bane of my existence. Okay, so we're looking at probably replacing this level 5 ring. And we've got better summon quality by just a tiny bit. We lose evasion. And we have the same attack speed and the same defense. That's the thing, like. Summon quality is up to 77%. This would make it 78%. Is there like a cap on the summon quality? Do we cap? Like, is this it? Do I have. Am I close to basically having the best skeleton quality possible? Oh, also. Have we made it past the campfire yet to get our horse? Oh, we were about to. Okay, so we were about to figure out what in the world the horde skill does for us. Horde. Three strengthened skeletons will be joining the hero on every loop to help in battle. 
on every loop is the key word I feel like. So where are they gonna be? What are they gonna do? Okay. There they are. They spawn. Cozy camp. I can't mouse over enemies that are on the map. You just get to see their little sprites. Okay, they're running after us. Ah, here they are. Well, this mimic is about to kill one of them. Oh, we got two mimics. And it crit the other one. <laughs> Did our horde just lose to two mimics? Is that what has happened? Okay, I still see three guys here. Nope, two of them died. Okay. Okay, so you get those three guys on your very first battle. And then basically you get to start with skeletons now when you have Horde. You get to start with three of them, and they're all the improved quality type. But once they die, they're not going to be in the next battle. So you're probably only going to get them in a few battles. And then here is the last one. Oh, I didn't kill it! Now will he come back with full health, or does, does their health carry over? We get a hundred more magic hit points, and we get some regen. We lose some in quality, and we lose some uh, skeleton level. I do like having their high quality, but the extra 100 health on the shield just seems really hard to pass up, so I won't pass it up. <laughs> okay, is he... Yes, his health carries over. At least that's what it looks like. Okay, so... How good is the horde skill? I don't think it's very good. Because here we are, at the very beginning. We've had two encounters, and it is now going to give us nothing until we do another loop. So, recommend not taking it. I don't really want any more regeneration, like... I stay pretty healthy. The point is that I need the combat strength to be able to get through the hard fights. That's the most important thing. So actually, ooh. We lose 60 magic health, and we get some summon quality. Summon quality drops to 50%, this would take it back up to uh, 78. I'm gonna keep the shield health, actually. Hang on to it. Okay, what else? are my initial impressions on the Necromancer. I think the Necromancer could actually be really good against the Chapter 2 boss, because the key that it seems to beating that Chapter 2 boss is attack speed. And we have, well, our character doesn't have crazy attack speed. Because we have multiple summons that would all be attacking. Uh, it's actually really pretty good. Because we have multiple summons that would be attacking, it will punch through all of the priestess's mirrors super fast. And then, uh, there, we finally finished this. And we got our level 6 ring of defense and evasion. <laughs> oh, why? Alright, we could pass up on some regeneration for 30 more. Oh, I guess I'll take the 30. But all the little skeletons would pop off the priestess's mirrors that she summons up and then back to be able to do damage to her. Because when we actually fought her, now true, we weren't in the greatest position. Like, I wasn't expecting to be able to do super well against her, but we did, like, nothing. She could summon her mirrors back so quickly that we only did, we only hit her, like, twice. And I think we were playing as the rogue when we did that. Actually, forget, we might have been the warrior. Now, she also brings up summons, but her summons are invincible, so you have no chance of... I mean, on the one hand, you're glad because you're not splitting your attacks onto summons that quote-unquote don't matter because they'll just disappear later on anyway. But it also means that like building high counter chance doesn't really help you. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of spitballing. We've got the stream of consciousness going on. How we're gonna manage to beat the chapter 2 boss. I don't know if we'll be able to beat it today. It'd be amazing if we did. I love that. 
But the key here is going to be getting runs where we get good resources. So we're close to getting the boss here. I don't think we're in a good spot to fight it. I just want to kind of get some more items. Get some more upgrades in the camp. See if we can progress in that way. No, I don't know. If we go in with like full health, we're basically full potions as well, and we pick up maybe some really good items here on the back half of the loop. I might change my mind and we'll just go straight in and see how the Necromancer fares against the Priestess. Like I was saying, I do think that he has a good shot, so take that for what it is worth. Ugh, I hate all of these scarecrows. They make the back half of our loop really dangerous, actually. Now we get to fight all the top bandits. At least the bandits, their attacks are going to be split onto the summons, so that I can be hitting us as many times if I have a chance to destroy items. We got a pretty level 8 book. Really punches up the skeleton level. Well, actually, not so much. The skeleton level off of this book is... 6? We lose three defense for just a tiny bit of skeleton level. Uh, it's so awkward when a secondary stat is also increasing the primary stat. I don't care about defense, so I'll take it. What is three defense really going to do for me, right? Nothing. Especially if it doesn't apply to magic. Alright, come on, bring up some more skeletons. Bring up some more. We want to be able to hit our limit. Our limit is 3 right now. It seems like we're only able to keep 2 on the board at once. Okay, we got the tank up. That's good. Hey, we got the double. We got the double, okay. This is one of the hardest battles. Who's going to attack? Please don't be us. Hey, yeah. We're coming together now. I'm not building the girls over here, I guess. I don't want to suppress any of these final fights. Yeah, dude. Okay, so what did we get? We got a level 8 grimoire here that adds regeneration, evasion, and some summon quality to the mix, but we will drop an entire summon level. I don't love that. That would cut our um, magic shield by too much. The thing is, once we go into the boss, I don't know if the magic shield is something I care about at all. Like, I would switch to get better uh, summon. And then over here we have a level 7 ring. I think that we just kind of straight up trade this out. We get the same defense, we get a little bit of regeneration. Our summon quality goes up just a tiny bit, but we also get some skeleton level on this. It does seem like we are hitting a cap on the summon quality. Well, we, I mean we need, we actually... It seems like you're getting a cap on the summon quality percentage that a single item will give you, but our whole our build overall is lacking in summon quality right now. We're not getting a special guy. Okay, let's see if we can fix that. Wow, that other book is way better. Like, my understanding is that skeleton level is actually a big deal. And for there to be that much variation between items of the same level seems odd. Odd to say the least. I don't know where to put this. It must be great footage watching me bubble around to figure out where I'm going to place this in the So, these are under level rings. Yeah, we would really like to get some better summon quality. I think we also would love to get some better attack speed because then it looks like we summon a skeleton if possible every time we attack. And that means that your attack speed means that you summon attack speed. And we want to be able to get all our summons in there as quickly as we can. Ooh, goblin. These guys are bad news. And Hey, we got another level up. That could be a big deal. Give me something that will improve my summon quality, please. I would love that. 
All oh, right, we got supplies. That's not it. Second thoughts. Maybe that's it. Counterattack. After hero receives direct damage, all skeletons have a 15% chance to immediately perform a counterattack. That seems pretty good. Because think, if we have three up, then as soon as someone hits us, there's a 45% chance that a skeleton will counterattack. Let's see what other things we can get though. Residual heat. Receive three times loop health after a skeleton's death. Oh wow, that is good. That is so good for keeping your health up. Field practice. 0.25 to skeleton's level for a loop. Starting from the loop when it's ready to feed. Meaning that it is useless. You don't retro retroactively increase their level. Ambitions of the dead. After killing an enemy, skeleton fully heals itself. Its damage and health are increased by 10% until the end of battle. I don't think that's good. At least, well, I don't think that is good for the boss fight. I am specifically looking at these for the boss fight, and I do not think that breaking mirrors counts as killing an enemy. And that means that our skeletons would not ever get the chance to heal from it. This gives us attack speed where we lose two whole skeleton levels. Alright, we have to fight more other skeletons. It's the good skeleton versus the bad ones. You can tell because mine have glowing eyes. Wait, what? <coughs> Alright, we can finally drop... Hmm, do I want to drop the max skeletons? The thing is we can only... then we would only have two up at once, but their quality would improve dramatically. We've kind of hung on to this ring for this long because of how many... I mean, we can hang on to this one, I guess. If it looks like in the boss fight I'm only able to keep two up at once anyway, then I'll switch it in and suddenly they'll be higher quality and get the warrior and get the tank. It means that we wouldn't be able to do this, we wouldn't be able to have three of them up. Alright, we'll go keep that max health up. Usually it doesn't matter too much. In this case, it is nifty because it's the only way to get our health up. Yeah, so our skeleton level is actually over leveled right now. It is above the loop level. So you guys are doing pretty good. Alright, come on. There's gonna be all these scared birds that are gonna be the death of us. I just know it. There's another grimoire. Yeah, but I don't want to sacrifice that much skeleton level. Like, hitting these two level 8 items, we're probably not going to see anything that's going to replace them because we're only on loop 6. Like, those were... Because they were gray, they were, like, still high level drops. But you just get, like, way over the loop level that you had. Yeah, I want to try this against the boss. Mm. Build a more summon quality. It seems like summon quality is maxing out to like 26%. So right around 26% per item. So then, with if you had four of them all with 26%, you would have 100% summon quality. Which... Man. I wonder what the thresholds are. I feel like there are set thresholds, like, at the, uh... At the 20, 25% line, you get the warriors. At the 50% line, you get the tanks. Like, what do you get at the above 80%, you know? Hey, one more magic health, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, and then I will trade it for attack speed as soon as we go into the boss. <clears throat> that actually sounds really good, trading it for attack speed to be able to keep our summons out there faster. If that is indeed how it works, please don't get erased in my inventory, please. I, otherwise, this is just for generation evasion. I don't mind. Alright. Priestess. What have you got? I will stay and fight. Here she comes. Okay, so. We want to... Wow, we start with full summons. Oh, it's because the horde triggered. 
the horde actually triggers to fight the boss. That is wonderful. All right, so we're going to wait for our magic shield to get depleted, and then we're going to swap in here to get the increased attack speed. Would you please stop? I refuse. Two arms! So this is the Necromancer. I don't think we've seen the Necromancer in... Uh, that's Okay. 40% chance to be picked by 10 glass windows. Summons against summons! Who has the better summons? Aha! I see you are taking damage! How did you do it? Oh wow, they get the damage all here. Someone has damage all. And someone's doing a lot of damage. Alright, come on. Crash this. Crash this thing glass. Reflect, reflect. Okay, our shield is out, so that means that we are trading in the attack speed. Keep summoning, keep summoning. Oh my gosh. This is night and day. It's so easy. Oh, it's so easy. Unless she has like a second stage. We got her. Come on, come on! I thought we had her. She's got two health. Yes! Can you get it? It's... It's so painful. Every time, like the first time, I still can't get used to it. Yeah, dying's not very nice. That's how the whole world feels right now. Not a great feeling, as you notice. Now you're... Wait, what do you mean by every time? Oh, it's not the first time. My faith in the Almighty brings me back to life again and again for the sake of my great mission to spread his word, to preach humility, obedience, and acceptance of the salvation he offers. And every time I fail, there's only dead bodies of heretics instead of conversations in my lifeless body. And why can't you understand the wish, the wish to survive is an essential part of this world? I don't know how it happened, but you've made a mistake interpreting the motives of the Almighty. Made a mistake? Me? That's impossible. I believe in it. I am the faith itself. I don't need to know or check anything. And you? What are you even trying to achieve? Nothing will ever be like it was anymore. Not even close. I don't know. Maybe it will. I can still try. You're just a fool, that's what you are. We'll meet again. Just let me rest a while. Looks like she's gone. I can hardly believe her corpse will ever come back to life. But even if it will, I should give her a proper burial. Mm, we've beaten! Gotten the achievement, Glass Queen. We've beaten her. We get these incredible items. And we have these rewards. Uh... Upon each building, hero gets 8 times loot experience. I have to, well, I just want to retreat and keep my eyes. On a, on hit, the hero can summon a blood lightning with mysterious chance. Okay. And... 25% chance that the enemies will have one ability less. I am God. That's a very interesting name to put there, Devolver, given that the whole thing is setting up God to be the big enemy. Of the enemy. All right, I am going to retreat though. I might have been able to make another loop. Welcome back. Is that a piece of glass sticking out of your shoulder? What? Oh, I didn't even notice it. It's not because of a high pain tolerance. I'm a bit shocked to tell the truth. I met a crazy preacher, stained glass windows, halos, and angel silhouettes all around. A holy jamboree, you could say. Let me guess. We have all sinned, and now we are doomed to face the holy wrath and apocalypse, and only in death shall we find salvation. Not exactly, it's more like God has decided to erase his creation, it has to be done, show some patience. Well, that makes some sense if you give it a little thought. Who else would have the power to do such a thing? I don't know much about Godhood, but 
I would think he'd be able to do all this instantly. Putting it simply, we'd all be dead already. We wouldn't even exist now. Even if the priestess is right, it's not a reason to give up. Oh. A howl from outer space. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah, and it felt horrible, like someone's coming to get me. Oh my gosh, what was that? <laughs>